This may not be the top eight we expected. There were a lot of upsets, but it's gonna be great. First up, winner side, the one and only. Let's hear it for the one and only, and his amazing Con Ra. And his opponent, KIT Grief, representing Sadira. The top eight will be three out of five all the way through. What's up guys, welcome to CEO 2015 Killer Instinct Top 8. I'm joined by Rick, AKA the Hado. How you doing, dude? You know, I'm doing pretty good. I'm actually really excited because we've got three out of five for the entire yeah. Top 8 here. And a bracket I never expected to be looking at. Yeah, this is kind of crazy. We're looking at a couple of Sidiras, a, uh, a couple of Spinals as well. Tyrant made his way into Top 8, which is really refreshing considering he had a little bit of a break from KI over he the did. past few months and uh, should be pretty good. Right now, we're going to be starting off with the one and only and Grief. One and only, pretty sure, going to be sticking it out with Conra. Grief, Guaranteed. absolutely going to be sticking it out with Sidira. And uh, we should have a pretty good set of matches. Like Spooky just said, these are going to be consistently, uh, I'm sorry, Adam just said, these are going to be three out of five, the entirety of the top eight. So we should have some pretty decent matches, matches as we get through because Killer Instinct completely changes after the second game. Oh, it's absolutely. like all the mind games are completely different. Yep. And on top of this, we're going to be starting off with the two characters that just don't stay on the ground. Yeah, right? That's pretty much it. Like, they, <laughs> they are airborne the majority of the time. Of course, you saw the KI introduction done by uh, Adam Hart Keats, who is the lead game designer right now over at Killer Instinct, uh, responsible for pretty much a lot of the Season 2 roster, how the game has been evolving over the past few months, and uh, kind of where it's at right now. Game yep. is uh, fairly balanced at the moment. Like, what he was saying is that they don't want to change a lot for EVO, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you were hanging around just CEO last night, the majority of the top 32 players that were playing this weekend yeah. hung out, got together. The arguments over top three and top five are hilarious. From a practical standpoint and a hypothetical standpoint, nobody can agree. Yeah, nobody no, can even agree no on the bottom agrees three. on anything. Like, the top five is even a huge argument. It's it's kind of crazy with KI right now, but this well, should be a lot Jago. of fun. This has got to be a button check. I'd be surprised if it wasn't a button check. <laughs> Definitely a button Definitely. check. Yeah. Once Conra starts eating fireballs, yeah, absolutely. This isn't the regular Conra skin. I hope he does use the mummy skin. It is one of my favorites in the game. Oh, uh, he terms normally of does. He does? Okay, cool. Does. And actually, I'm not a big fan of mummy Jago, <laughs> which is like toilet paper Jago. Yeah. Not, not my favorite. It's not bad, though. Yep, so, there we go, mummy. Outside of our usual... Four characters we were just talking about, a couple of Sidiras, uh, and a... We have a Jago in top four winners. We have a Jago. We have also a Saber Wolf and a Thunder. Yep. And I'm pretty sure that is what we're going to be looking at for the majority of this tournament. But you know what? Grief seems to be not confident with Sidira in this matchup, and he's actually wow. straying away from his main character, which is Sidira. I that didn't is expect a, this at all. That is a confident golden freaking Jago. <laughs> there we go. Conrad getting set up early. Yeah, catches him with the bugs. I do like what Griefer's doing. He's pushing him into the left side of the corner. Keeping Conrad out is going to be kind of hard right now, though. Nice jump. Actually, the moon jump that he got from the, uh, from the curse helped him get in. I actually, I think very frequently that cursed players yeah. wind up getting advantageous jumps. Yeah, because, because you're not used to it. <laughs> So when Conra grabs you and kind of puts a spell on your face and he pushes you away, you get this blue aura around you, and that uh, kind of slows down all your movement and your normals, but it also makes you jump pretty high. Good response from one and only. Gets the setup. No recapture, but gets a uh, returns himself back to the corner. Really smart. Yep. Out of the corner, pressure situation, swarms a hand, and he's just going to stand there for a while. This is not good. Grief needs to hit something so he can cancel Ooh. into instinct. Doesn't even get that. He's going to wait for an uppercut. Jago, one of the unique characters in Instinct, can recover his health if he lands fireballs. And there it goes. 
Yeah, that's not going to lead to much, though. He, needed, he really needed that to hit. These have to hit in order for him to actually gain any health back. I mean, in a, in a proper combo with Jago's and Instinct, you can get him gain 30% back yeah, pretty easy. But if you're just activating open and trying to shoot fireballs willy-nilly, you're not going to get much luck out of that. If you get that, yeah, that, that DP, cancel it, you can get a raw 30% back. It's uh, really advantageous. Doesn't have much to recover here, though, so... One and only waiting for an opportune moment to use his instinct. Still doesn't have it. Actually, doesn't even need to do it. He might be saving it, but I there it goes. Yep. So that move does do a little bit of damage. Conra sacrifices a small bit of life just to get the hell out of there. There was that DB cancer we were talking about a second ago. Trying to use it to keep him safe, but... Locked right... Ooh. Oh, that's a tough break. And by a tough break, I am being very literal. Yes. It's not looking too good for Grief right now. Well, one and all, he's getting set back up. He's in a very, very safe position yeah, right once now. Yeah, if he has bugs and sand out, it's a huge problem. But Grief is going to get a big opportunity here. He's going to go for a launcher ender. And get a whole bunch of life. One, two. Shadow. Ooh. I think he just missed it. Yep. There we go. Got a little bit of health. He does. He did. Immediate launcher. The shadow. There's more love. Wow, we are at an even game right now. This is crazy. And that is why Jago's instinct and is that's phenomenal. That's why Jago's pretty crazy. I really did not expect to see Grief playing Jago. Let's let's make a comeback from like 25% back to 75%. Yes. Here we go. One and only has got what he needs. The setup. Where's he going with it? Just waits. Yeah. Good block from Grief. Actually, an infinite amount of patience. Good Breaks break. The mediums, I think. Caught him on back dash. Going for really short damage. Hard knockdown. This is exactly what Grief needs. Another hard knockdown. Next hit's gonna do it. Yep. Oh! One and only clutches it out with the shadow counter. Misses oh. his freaking manual. And Grief <laughs> takes it. I'm surprised he didn't do stage ultra, but that's too risky. Yes. That is way too risky. There's no reason to do that. Oh, I can't believe Grief brought that back from a huge life deficit. And because it was Jago, he changed the life deficit back to an even game, which yeah. is funny as heck to think. But that was just a huge drop from one and only. He's got to shake that off because he's going to be fine. He's going to be fine. That was just just a drop manual. It happens. Well, and I mean, he had most of that match in control. He was yeah, set up pretty regularly. He was getting around the screen consistently. If not for the, uh, honestly, the hard read on the grab they're missing, he probably still would have flushed it out. One and only does have the tools to make this fight work in his favor. It's just he has to reliably have sand on the ground or bugs in the air. Yep. And if Conrad has either one of those, he's dangerous. Well, on top of that, just running into a Jago being played at a high level is getting significantly more uncommon as the yes. game gets longer in its lifespan. It is true. You run into, like, I'd say more mid-level Jagos, especially in an online environment, more than anything. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a ton of mid-level Jagos, but when it comes to the super high stuff, not really. Well, and Jago's got enough frame traps and enough good normals that at a mid-level, he's definitely dangerous, but yes. at a high level, he becomes incredibly threatening in ways that you're not really accustomed to seeing all the time. Yep. Facing out with fireballs. Every time Jago lands a fireball, it gives him a pretty big boost of meter. Yes. Even on block. But now he's just waiting for something to uppercut cancel into his instinct. There it is. Didn't block oh. the over at that time. Here's some health back. So all of Jago's normals have super frame advantage right now until one and only shadow counters forward roundhouse. Oh, that'll that's be the round. Big lockout. One and only making a huge adjustment here, and actually that's a huge win because it prevents Jago from gaining any health back within the first health bar. It does, and depending on uh, what Grief is picking up on here. Oh, oh that was sick. That was really nice. One and only has actually been shadow countering most of his multi-hit normals. Yeah. And a really good call. Forward roundhouse, not an easy thing to counter online. A lot easier in an offline environment. You need that extra frame or two. Very much so. And he seems willing to save his meter for that purpose. He's yep. not, not doing a lot of recapture combos, not just burning it on Swarm. Jago's forward roundhouse is also, I believe, positive on block. So it's just his really good pressure normal. Dreef trying to find his way in. There it is. Yeah. Prime example right there. And one and only does not have any uh, shadow meter at the time. He does now, so Grief has got to be very careful about it. Get him with the overhead, no combo, though. That's unfortunate. That's Capture? No. Oh. Interesting. Straight. I have no idea where Jago is about to fall. Oh, very risky block. Yep, and, and the round. Goes straight forward. That's good. Grief still has a chance here. He's just a hair away from getting instinct, but if he gets locked out, man, it's going to be game over. Ooh, I like it that he was trying to contest the dive. It just didn't work out. Yeah. Have we seen one and only go for a recapture combo at all this set? I don't think so. I think he's actually been, like, 
He's not doing it to prevent maybe breaks. Just wants to go for solid damage. Seems likely. Getting very close here for one and only. Yeah. This will be a... Oh, and no, that that'll will be, be it. nearly it. Yeah. Oh, slaps him in the face with stand medium. <laughs> Just whack with the bandage. Whack! His, his dirty bandages. Those things cannot smell good. No. Especially not in this costume. All right, here we go. Going into I, match three. I think Grief might be... Might have been hoping to take a game with with Jago. Maybe he's going to switch to Sadira. He might not be confident with Sadira just because of how much stuff that Conrock can put on the screen, but he's going to make the switch. Well, I mean, he definitely took the first game pretty acceptably here, and if one and only takes out this one, he'll be able to switch back, so yeah. he's not stuck. I, um, I kind of want to see, yeah, see, I wanted to see him stick with that to see whether that last match was just a fluke Good or... Call. Going he's going to do it. And he had he had a good first game. I he, think he, he saw did. the potential even in the second game. It's just a couple things didn't work out in his favor. Got locked out early on. So uh, let's see what adjustments he makes. Well, and he didn't get any of the life regen that he was looking for in that he second did. game. Yeah, he just missed it. Conra's uh, Masoops, when he summons the pillar from the ground, doesn't do a lot of chip damage or doesn't do a lot of damage in itself. All it really is is for setup. You'll notice that a lot of Conrad stuff doesn't do a, a ton of damage until he gets into combo, but it's all about getting you over or into something. Absolutely. Just keeping you irritated and keeping you locked that down. So irritated you that is the grab. greatest word. That will hit. Ooh. Oh, hey, so one and only had the right idea, just the wrong time. Yep. It's looking really good for Grief right now. He's going to have to pop. No, he uses the sand to uh, do a super jump out. Yep, Conra, anytime he's on sand, has three super job mm -hmm. options, back, up, and forward, all of which are astonishingly quick in comparison yeah. to the rest of the cast. He jumps up probably faster than any other jump in the game. Oh, Good call from one and only. That almost captures him in the bugs, but not... Oh, there's that one down there. I totally missed that. Interesting combo stop. Some shadow counterable stuff doesn't seem to go for it. Yeah. Grief waiting for his moment. And he, anytime I see a counter on match where he's got the buzz saw out and he goes yeah, into swarm and I don't see, saw. I don't see either of those two options shadow countered. I'm always a little sad. Buzz saw hits five times and it's pretty easy to hit for the shadow counter on the final hit. Swarm hits three and it's the same way. That's true. We're Sha just about even here. Shadow swarm is a little bit different because he recovers faster in the end. Yes. But that you just kind of have to accept. All but right, there we go. If anybody's wondering why we're looking at Grief whipping normals in the air all the time, he's actually cutting apart those swarms so he can get down to the ground safely. Yeah, any normal hitbox that runs into a swarm will actually dissipate it. Good stuff from one and only. Was facing the wrong way. That was There it is! Wish it led to something. Well, a little bit later on the timing, he probably yep. actually could have got the combo, but didn't get the overhead here. Got him in the corner so at least. Grief yeah, there he's gone. missed his instinct activation setup, which he really needed to hit. Conrad doesn't have instinct anymore. Oh, oh, no, that was either an input error or just a really bad call, but that's a good one. Projectile invulnerability on the Shadow wow, Kick. Wow, amazing guest break from one and only. Nailed the light linker. A lot of offense right now. Reef is just sitting back, though. He seems really content to block, which is both good and a little scary yeah, to watch against Conrad. You, you kind of need to go in on this guy. You need to really start... Making a move, but he's being very careful. So either be, yeah, it'll be some good damage. Chooses not to break any of it. Grief is now stuck in the corner with sand under his feet. That can be really scary. Gets it out. Get pushed back though. He's got plenty of meter to keep himself a little safe, depending on situation. That, that could be it. And Ooh. he counter breaks in the end to go into ultra, and Grief is going to take it with Jago. Good stuff. My God, that was the best jump he could have done. So that what he so did, he, he jumped over the command grab. There's a really long distance command grab that uh, Conra has. He just made the best call he possibly could, jumped in, kicked him in the face, and went right into Ultra. Well, and the interesting thing that makes that still frightening is Conra's command grab goes airborne. He it can does. catch airborne opponents at two separate angles. He can pretty so much go like right above his head or right in front of him yeah. and at an angle. And uh, if, if you see people start calling you jumping like right above your head, that's when you're like, I don't want to play anymore. <laughs> I don't feel good about anything right now. Well. Oh, that's so good, though. Because particularly with Swarm out, they're kind of can hurt you from any angle you're at. Yeah, that's the thing, is that if he has the uh, the bugs or the sand out at any given time, and Conrock can actually shift his position when he's in that regular command grab to put you into the bugs and into the swarm. So it's kind of dangerous. Yep. 
Gets the solid damage right at the start. Goes for a one chance break. Another just pretty much a Yomi grab. Good damage out the gate. And, wow, he's landed three of them in a row. This is crazy. Jump, maybe? Oh, he did it. Yep. But good anti air. That's down heavy punch, I believe. Yes, it is. Okay, so one and only is going for a lot of grabs so far this game. Good whiff punish. Getting in there. So is Grief now. Wow, there's, an, there's a great amount of footsies being displayed by Grief right now. And then Conrad took to the sky and it was all over. Good Got him. shadow. That does go through projectiles. He misses his manual, sadly. I really want to see I really want to see Grief like stagger a bit and maybe go low. That always catches me when Jago does that. I think Jago has plenty of good buttons to be pressing, and we're not actually seeing all of them. I think he's found a couple that have been working for him for the most part, and he is sticking to them. Yep. Conrad trying to stay set up. Funny. Wow. One and only is consistently trying to do the sand splash from full screen where he drives down into the ground. Yes. Because the wave of sand that comes up will nullify Jaco's projectiles. Another consistent shadow counter against forward roundhouse. Gets one and only another setup. And after every single one, he's done a very short combo to make sure he gets both a yes. sand trap and a swarm out. We were noticing, we were talking about earlier how he doesn't have a recapture yet. He's literally going for the shortest combos of the damage just to set up. Yep. I don't think he's confident. I don't think he likes getting combo broken at all. Another Once again amazing shadow counter. Good stuff, man. It's four for four now. Good cross up. Is he going to launch that him up into it? That should be. Doesn't need to at all. Doesn't need to. Dead so. Well, that was very convincing from one and only. Um, I think Grief can still pull this out with Jago, but at the same time, he does have his main character. Absolutely. But we'll see. Um, I think a lot of it is going to be how confident he feels here right now. Yeah, he is going to character switch. He did this before, and he essentially just switched colors, so we'll see what he does now. Same thing. Jago. Oh, no, please don't pick the mummy color. Please don't pick oh. toilet paper, Jago. Oh, no, he did it. Why did he do it? See, I'm like I'm I'm in I'm in the, I'm in the group that kind of likes classic Jago. I kind of do. It does resemble old Jago. If you look at old ye old Jago, it it looks very similar. There's more skin showing in this one. Yes. Stripper Jago is an appropriate title. But at the same time, I think time, in terms of capturing Retro Jago, Retro Jago does just fine. Yes. It looks like old KI. I, do, I, I do think agree. the only problem is is it just does not look as good in this game <laughs> as yeah. standard Jago costume yeah. or uh, yeah, it kind of shows you that the, the new Jago. I I initially, when I first saw Jago in this game, I wasn't impressed. They looked like a Mortal Kombat character. I was like, I don't know, man. I just don't like him. Over the span of a few days of playing the game at E3, I ended up liking him by the end of it. I thought it was actually a really cool design. It he, grows on he grows. You. It grows on you exactly. It's accessorized well, minus maybe the rocks tattoo on his arm. Yeah, but. exactly. I remember telling that to the Double Helix guys. I'm like, I really hate the way Jago looks. And then by the end of the show, I really like the way Jago looks. Good combo breaker here by Grief. Shadow counters again. I think he's got to stop approaching the forward roundhouse. It's, he just needs to identify when he has meter because right now one and only is essentially saving it for that. Huge. Uh, we haven't seen one and only even attempt to break a shadow move, by the way. Like, he's Jago's done consistently shadow uh, win kick like four times now. There hasn't even been a one that's been pressed. Yep. Goes right through the bugs. Good response. Oh, oh, he misses the manual, though. Good blocks this. right now from one and only. Punishes and actually uses the shatter to get Jago the hell out of there. Gr amazing recapture. Ooh. And then a bogus a bogus counterbreaker. He's at he's, he's 0 for 2 right now in this game. He's got to be really calm about that stuff. Yep. Whereas Grief this game is getting fantastic breaks left and right. Even though, even though one and only has had a couple of unfortunate things happen to him, they're pretty much even in life still in the first round. It's very close. Conrad getting set up. Just backs off. Ow. That'll work. There we go. This is the other reason you have to be careful with Conrad. Even if you hit him as he's creating that sand pit off the ground, it's always going to come out. Yes. You can't actually stop him once he's raising his arms. Trying to do something. He's just gaining meter. Yep. That's one thing. He's not really relying it on chip damage, the pillar or the masoops. He's actually using it for meter build. Which is a slow meter build. It's just a slow. It needs something. Good neutral jump. Good. He's got him in the corner. And I one and only is not using that sand explosion. 
No, he's not, and he's getting thrown. Wow, great tech. I think he just might have been breaking lights. Oh! oh he had the right idea. Just a little too far out of range. Pops instinct. Backs off. Good stuff. Jacob's keeping the pressure is, on. This is tense. He gets the cross up into bugs. Did he and just whiff Scarab? Yeah, because the sand was over there. All right, Jago is currently. Oh, there's the moon jump. The moon jump <laughs> saved him again. I don't believe it. The MJ. moon jump. <laughs> we have we have a Jago in winners finals now. That is well, so the, the most hilarious thing is that Jago being being cursed saved him twice. We saw it happen earlier. We got a moon jump and then he whiffed the grab because Jago landed way too late and it happened again. Yes, he it was, did. He's so light on his feet once he actually gets stunned. <laughs> he jumped into the air for it looked like a virtual Here fighter jump. Oh, Good I'm stuff. I'm scared on winter side now. You have Grief sitting Yomi, in winter's finals with Jago an apparently Blade. extremely strong Jago and Jago. one of the best Sidiras in the business. And then he'll just switch to Sidira when he wants to. And we have the other Jago on winter side, which is again just unexpected. Yes. And yes. it's honestly fantastic to see. There's a lot of people talk about Jago from a theory standpoint being one of the best characters in the game. Yeah. And Let's this go. might be the weekend we get Let's to see some proof go. of that. Yeah. He should be fighting and his opponent. everyone's favorite Smile. Jago Ultra Blake is going against base. base. I believe he's representing Ultra Arcade this weekend. From the looks of it, he still or is. is. It we'll never know. Yeah, I actually, I actually talked to Bass recently, and he doesn't. It was, it's not Bass. He's just a huge fan of fish. It's, it's Bass. Confirmed. <laughs> just a big fish uh -oh. fan. Competitors are very subdued. We should find him a Ranger Boats sponsorship. <laughs> the, I'm not gonna lie. If anybody's actually had the opportunity to the enter this ring, it's kind of dangerous. Out. Yes, it is. It is a little. <laughs> it's it's kind of funny when you try it. It's like, uh, ooh, dude, whoa, whoa. The, Bailey. the ropes are very tight. Insurance. It is not the easiest ring to get in and out of. We need insurance, dog. I am sure there is insurance. <laughs> There's rope insurance. So, uh, yeah, Jago Blake's going to be going up against base. This is going to be Spinal versus Jago. And uh, I'm going to say this is probably against Jago. It's probably a 6-4 in Spinal's favor just because Jago needs his instinct and needs his fireballs to get stuff done really bad like Jago now relies probably more than ever on the fact that he instinct activates and recovers a holy crap ton of health absolutely he, he needs that and he actually if he if he hits it twice he almost can win like every single match and really good Jagos have the setup for that they have the stagger low they have the stagger overhead or even the throw into shadow fireball and yep. we didn't see grief doing that at all like he had a lot of meter at his at his disposal and since Jago can cancel his throw into a shadow move I never saw him do it. I think he just forgot he had it. We didn't, and we'll probably see a little bit more of that with Jacob Blake since he plays Jago almost exclusively. He's a consistent Jago main, yeah. And with Bass having a couple of nerfs here with Spinal now, so he's not going to have quite as many skulls quite as yeah. constantly. Um, the well. biggest one that actually you've seen probably, like there's there's some subdued nerfs, you know, and then there's ones that you that are very obvious. Like a subdued one would be the invincibility on Shadow Searing Skull. Yep. That one was Which extremely good from Teleport. It was super annoying uh, at high level play, but you honestly would never see it. The one that you're going to be seeing a lot, though, is his crouching heavy punch isn't nearly as consistently uh, appropriate as an anti air at all. Like, it whiffs a lot now. I was seeing, uh, as we saw, Tyrant is in this tournament as well. He was trying to hit Sadira out of the air repeatedly with down HP, and it just wouldn't hit her because the hitbox has been changed. It's not nearly as huge as it used to be. Looks like we got Jago Blake going with the uh, Shadow Jago skin. That's good. This will be uh, the last year that we can see that still with normal Jago moveset. I uh, I won't lie. I'm really looking forward to Shadow Jago being a real boy. I want I want to play that character. I think Shadow Jago is cooler than regular Jago, and I really like regular Jago. I love his voice. It sounds so awesome. Well, that's oh. a big risk at the start. Setup is already Never cut that early in the round. Yeah, that is a. Uh, yeah, he might have been trying to do something. That's Ooh, a great good Blake break. on the triple linker. We should just be seeing a lot of footsies here in this match. A lot of spacing. You're not going to see. Yeah, you're not going to see Jago Blake throwing out a lot of fireballs, especially from mid screen or long screen, because Spinal just gets free skulls. This is going to hurt. And set up into Shadow Cash Out. I'm actually kind of surprised he used it for that, but that looked really cool. Bass likes the style. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yep, not at all. Spinal's the coolest looking character in the game. I'm okay with it. As long as I don't have to fight it. 
He is a cool looking character. I don't know if he's the coolest anymore. Oh man. <laughs> we can argue about that later though, because Bass is quote just unquote cool. There you go. Jacob Blake's had a couple of bad breaks already this first round. Bass yeah. is eating him alive. So he's eating his be, meter. He's eating his instinct. Losing his instinct. He's losing his bar. Spinal now has full bar almost. Yeah, now he does. Yep. And for the people watching at home, those blue and yellow orbs you see flying around Jago all match long. The blue ones are sapping his meter, the yellow ones are sapping his instinct, and they're happening every time he gets hit with either a regular EX skull from Spinal, which nice is... slow forward. Good grab. That ends the round. Good Jago Blake brought it back. The only way you can get rid of these uh, these curses that take your instinct and your, uh, and your meter is just to hit Spinal. Yep. Which is often harder than it sounds. Good overhead, good throw, gets a skull off that throw, sets up, and he's got fantastic nice. shadow counter. Great idea from Jado Blake. That's exactly what he needed. Wow. And misses the hard knockdown, but gets a free throw after it. No teleport out from base. Base doesn't teleport pretty He doesn't yeah, he doesn't use that as a, as a get out. No. He, he kinda plays spinal defensively enough where he's learned not to do that. Yeah. He's willing to definitely just stand Except there and the block. block. Uppercut. Whoa! Oh, great read from base. Locks Doesn't the block the skull, overhead, that's the and that's it. Oh, little dive kick style for yep. fun there. Oh, this is going to be good. Neck crack. There we are. I do love the way the characters look on this stage. There is there is a great contrast of color in KI, which is why I think it's a really fun game to watch visually. Like you get like this bright red background, you get this bony character that has a completely different color palette, and then you have Shadow Jago, who's this blue dude. I think it, it looks really good. Oh, he's going to normal Jago. That's exactly now. what was going on. Jago Blake just had the wrong skin. That Shadow Jago skin just has like five less horsepower than regular Jago. <laughs> it's like it's like Gran Turismo <laughs> when you stick like a bumper sticker on your car and it gives you gives you ten more horsepower. Here we go. Oh, the one time we actually see Jago's eyes open on the loading screen. It is so rare for that to happen. I don't think I've actually ever seen his eyes open. Yeah, he usually always has his eyes closed because it just pauses at an awkward moment in Season 2, and now it finally happened. Maybe it's a player one thing. Good break to start it off. A lot of spacing right now. You'll see Bay's doing a lot of footsies, which is Spinal pretty much putting his sword forward and back like a lot. It's just because Spinal's walk speed is so poor. He doesn't need it, though. He doesn't need it. He gets around just fine. He's got four momentum normals. He's got his teleport. He's got his run. Nice backdash from Jacob Blake. Does have invincibility. You'll see, you will see a lot of similarities between Street Fighter 4 and Killer Instinct because there is quite a few. It was the original base that the kind of the game was built upon, but heavily modified. Good combo breaker. No one on the winner's half of this bracket is breaking shadow moves yet. Nope. Everybody's waiting them it's, out. It's too risky. I think right now in tournament, everyone's double thinking everything they're doing. Yep. And Jago Blake's going to lose a lot of instinct right now unless he hits Spinal. And he does. Fantastic. Spinal's got an instinct to pop. It's going to give him It's gonna give him re regenerating skulls, not full skulls anymore. That was actually one of his recent changes. Burning instinct uh -oh. to safety. Oh, oh, that oh. was really, really good. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't keep going. I, I can almost guarantee he wasn't actually expecting that to work. Nope. That no uppercut, though. Oh, oh, it almost looked like base knew he was going to do it. He ran in and did nothing. Pretty much made Jago Blake waste his meter, and now he's going to lose his meter and lose his instinct. Spinal. Spinal. That is a very hard way to end a match. Great overhead. And base is the first person to break a shadow move in Killer Instinct Finals at CEO. Corner. This is the worst pressure, is to deal with corner up fireball. Jacob Blake lands the uh, the throw, and as long as he's able to pop another instinct, he's got a very good chance. He's got to oh. stay away from the corner, though. Oh, this is painful to watch, as man. A as, as, a, as a character, I suppose, a full gore player, seeing all your meter go down the drain as well as your instinct, it's a heartbreak. As a Glacius player, watching same your instinct thing. go away makes me cry. I think it, I think it's the same thing for every character, unless it's Spinal versus Spinal. Jacob Blake's going to get a lot, of, a lot of health back right here. He's got to land a couple more hits, though. But, oh, that's the second unlucky like, shadow he's counter. He's like 0 oh for 3 now in shadow counters. That's going to be it. So Jacob Blake has the right idea. He's just been using it a little too much. Yep. Uh, he has. He's playing a solid Jago at the moment. I would. I would like to see more uppercuts and Spinal's jump ins right now because I think he's playing 
He, he's kind of afraid. It's very easy to be terrified of Spinal. What you want is the hard knockdown, and you need to pressure the holy god out of him. He's already dead, so yeah. needs to be pressured. Well, you just got to get him down. You got to keep on top of him. Yes. I'd like to see a like lot. What's happening right now? I'd like to see a lot more low normals coming out of Jago Blake here, because Spinal is back dashing a lot. He's waking up in the corner with buttons. Mm -hmm. Um, need to crush some Forward, of that. You could forward roundhouse him for days, Absolutely. as long as he does not have the meter to shadow counter. Oh, man. Oh, skull. That is an Normals. opener. And there it is. Very pretty combo from, from base. It's spinal. Everything he does is pretty. Unless it's hitting you. Oh, God. He missed the uppercut oh, no. for some freaking reason. It whiffed. I don't even know. Level 1 launcher just not enough to put him in the right zone. Apparently not. That is an incredibly tough break for Blake. He should have had the round off that if it had been. Spinal run canceling his normals by using skulls. Jacob Blake can still do this. He is losing some stuff right now. Oh. Uses the meter to make the upper body oh. invincible. And base takes round one off of a literal hair. And now he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the, like, the anticlimactic killer instinct round end when you have no life and you get poked like in the nuts and you fall to the ground. Well, the only alternative <laughs> is one of the hypest rounds you can have. That's so true. That's true. Good shadow. Chooses doesn't not to break again. Not even a touch. Hard knockdown. That's unbreakable at the end. You at least can just get like almost no damage, but you can you can get the setup with the hard knockdown. Yep. Oh. Jacob Blake is not having much luck yeah, with those Yeah, I think uppercuts. Jacob Blake really wanted to pop his instinct at some point in there. It's just not happening. This is what Spinal yep, does. corner. Getting locked into the corner with Bass is probably one of the worst experiences you can have as a KI player. Yeah. And that's, that's going to be a match. Jacob Blake. Jacob Blake. Oh, oh, shadow counters through it. Doesn't matter, though. Because base <laughs> knew the shadow counter was coming, so he did something that recovers super fast, which is a light attack. Yep. Oh my god. Oh. Base just showing a level of understanding in that matchup that I have not seen before. Great stuff. Jago Blake also did a really good job too. It was good to see uh good to see another Jago in top eight. It was. Oh, that's gotta be unfortunate. So it I think happens, I think man. coming up next we'll uh we'll probably be bouncing over to losers. Yep. So on the loser side, I we'll think we're going to probably see what, Paul B and Tyrant coming up. So we'll have another spinal, but we'll also have any number First of up, Paul B's feral creatures to contend Paul with. Paul B! Paul, a notorious uh, Season 2 Killer Instinct player. We didn't see him a whole bunch in, in Season 1, but we did see him at CEO last year in tournament. He was absolutely Representing here. Representing Maroon 5. Is, is he coming out to the Rocky theme? No, he's coming out to no. Survivor's Eye of the Tiger. Wow. I want to get hyped for that, but for some reason I can't. <laughs> it's impossible. It's such a great song, though. Yeah, even Paul's like, ah, I should have picked a different track. <laughs> you you have get to, stuck with the backpack. You, you have ropes to, on the backpack. You have to choose a song. Yeah. His opponent. Well, you it's know him. You love him. Representing Hitbox. It's Tyrant! There we go. <laughs> it's just one of those things where not a lot of these guys are uh, camera attentive. Uh, no, and I <laughs> that that is just kind of pretty common. It's pretty common in our community. I mean, it's the community. Oh well, well, at least we've got Hitbox. Hey, over he here. shook a hand. There we go. Look at him. He's a good guy. He's 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 the hero. And he came out to Johnny Cash. He's planning to put Paul B in a so, body bag. Okay, here, the, the first thing I thought, like when when Jabaili signed me up for that Remember Street Fighter Four thing that I got totally five, destroyed in, yep. was uh, I need to pick a song that is immediately identifiable on the first note. And I'm like, okay, so it's obviously the touch. And, I, <laughs> I, and then I was very happy that people were very excited for me to go up there to get destroyed by PR Balrog and his uh, legacy run that ended up being the end of that night. That was oh. absolute insanity, man. He pretty much destroyed all the some of the greatest players in Street Fighter in a row. P.L. Balrog at one point was winning matches one-handed while activating Headbutt into Super. I was not I was not ready for the speed of that jab. I have completely forgotten <laughs> that Balrog has a two-and-a-half frame jab. I was like, wow. Well, That's pretty nasty. This is hitting all the time. All right, and it looks like Tyrant has got Godspeed up to provide some coaching during the course of this set. Uh, coaching rules are actually limited at CEO. He's got a minute in between matches, cannot be coached in between rounds. What about massages? Uh, no I'm, massage rules? I don't think there are any massage rules. Okay. I'm not sure if that would impact play positively or negatively, actually. Uh, yeah. It could just be awkwardly. Well, yeah, there was this really interesting thing I saw at a local Japanese tournament recently. I forget which one it was. 
but they had some some girl, some very cute girl in cosplay serving the player's beer. <laughs> and it's like, I think it's going to take a while for that to happen over here. <laughs> I think um, it's going to be quite some time. I'm not confident Twitch is a big fan of that particular <laughs> initiative, so that one might be way, yeah. way far she off. Was in, she was, I think she was drinking too, so hey, oh, everyone okay. is just having a great time. So, uh, of course, Hitbox Tyrant repping the uh, Hitbox Arcade Stick. As you might know, there is no uh, there is no stick to his Arcade Stick. It is all buttons, and it comes from a long-running tradition slash legacy of using your keyboard as a controller for fighting games, yep. which a lot of players did over many years of uh, playing fighting games on emulation. It's not as hard as you would think, and the Hitbox is kind of one of the, uh, one of the easiest methods to get the cleanest inputs possible for your fighting game. Also makes some pretty crazy inputs a lot easier to do once you get used to it. Absolutely. So Paul B went with Saber Wolf. This should be nothing but pressure. Yeah, I think Hitbox Tyrant has a lot of experience with this because he was obviously a big Season 1 player. Saber Wolf, profoundly prominent within Season 1. And I think he... Profoundly he, good. Profoundly prominent because he was very good. And Tyrant... Tyrant Kind of like, I think Saber Wolf is technically better than he was in Season 1. Outside of the, the, the overall system change, which is the fact that you can't cash out the damage for a whole bunch with level with level 4 at the start. Yep. But Saber Wolf's instinct makes him much more dangerous within that mode. His instinct can pretty much take an entire life bar if you don't block correctly. I'm shocked that Tyrant did not go for a full punish after blocking that overhead. That is a, uh, he went for a grab instead. Paul B going for a side switch into... I always forget the name of his. I'm just going to say uppercut. Lunar Eclipse. Lunar Eclipse. Let's go with that. Oh, very Good nice stuff. from Tyrant. Good break from Paul. Paul Green not afraid to break stuff. That is punishable, but he couldn't get through it. Good backdash from Paul. Both and players jabs. are just playing very carefully right yeah, now. Yeah, jabs right through. Paul's made a couple of really good guest breaks so far. That is his style, though. Yep, all those moves. A lot of Saber Wolf's crouching kick attacks are meant for their frame advantage, but they start out slow. All of his jabs and his like crouching medium punch are about the speed. Catches his instinct. Ooh, hits him low. The Spinal's crouching medium kick is actually special cancelable now. Yes, it is. And one of the many buttons that with all of these errant hits coming out, you'd like to see a couple of specials come off so we can get an open errant place. Yep. Ooh, he beats the crouching Side heavy kick. punch completely. Paul guesses right once again on the linker. That gets punished. Gets locked out there though. I don't think he's. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't. I, there was a good chance that Paul could have tried to pop instinct, and then I just realized it was gone. <laughs> the magic of playing against Spinal. Spinal once again gets another instinct. This is exactly what Tyrant needs. That will work. There's that instinct starting to cancel out of his moves. And that's going to be about it. Not only does he get the ability to cancel out of his specials and normals, he uh, gets a ton of damage as well. So Saber yes. Wolf's instinct pretty much makes him, in my opinion, just as good as Season 1. He lacks a little bit of the mobility, but then he becomes an absolute nightmare when he's an instinct. I think it's hard to argue. Yeah, yeah. Tyrant's still wearing his shades. Face is completely expressionless. You'd think this was a poker tournament if I looked at him. <laughs> Goes it, for the uh, skulls. That gives him full skulls. Good trip by Paul. Big sweep. Saber Wolf's uh, crouching heavy punch is also a fantastic poking tool. A huge sweep and a... Uh, that was a lot of damage. That was a lot of damage. That's what happens when you get when you get locked out against Saber Wolf. Repeating doubles is a, is a huge threat. Good jabs. This... I think the third time we've seen Tyrant get locked out with Paul then dropping the combo. Yeah, it's kind of odd. Kind of curious what the startup of Eclipse is uh, on the heavy one, because it seems that some Saber Wolf players just use it as a natural, like, anti-air, and I could have swore whenever I played Saber Wolf back in the day, that thing was slow as heck. Trying to remember for you, and I Yeah, it's I just, it just it seems like one of those things I'm seeing more and more now, and potentially it's just a, a much better tool. Good response. Oh. Good counter breaker. That should be full skulls. 
Actually, no, Searing Skull does not cash out, but he gets the grab. So he is taking away Paul B's instinct at the moment, which is exactly what he wants to do. He pretty much wants to ride that out as soon as possible. I like I like what Paul B was doing there. Use the uh, the jump over to avoid the uh, the skull. Tyron countered it with teleport though. No, oh, that was a big counter hit. Paul does have instinct. Yeah, I have a funny feeling that was about to happen. Yep. Right wow. into it, and the reason that was doing so much damage is because he was in instinct. Godspeed trying to give a recommendation here to Tyron as Tyron is uh, Godspeed's like getting I, rolled over at the moment. Godspeed's like, I think you should pick Jax. I think if you if you just use anti-air rocket, it'll it'll definitely help. It'll make it really, if you do the x-ray at the perfect time, it's going to be good. That uh, incredibly helpful killer instinct and advice. And Tyron's like, Godspeed. dude, but I'm playing Marvel right now. <laughs> Loads it's up like, on skulls, gets the corner. Spinal does build his uh, potential damage very fast. And the amount of potential pips that he's gained it equivalates to how many skulls he gets in the end. Oh, good grab. Tyron is blocking all of Paul's high lows right now. Ooh. Oh. Paul made a uh, Paul made a different decision on that medium. Gonna go for grab? Ooh, he actually went for something else. I'm not even too sure what. Guess gonna take the chip damage win. Yep. He's not taking his instinct right now, though. Spinal might need to pop his as soon as possible. Oh! Oh! oh, oh. That is the... Uh, Saved by the Feral Cancel. So Sp Tyrant has obviously not not have a lot of experience against uh, Season 2 Saber Wolf. That is what he can do. Even on whiff, he can cancel his moves. So much damage. Doesn't punish. Good blocks from Paul. Goes for another grab right before it hits. Another one that doesn't hit. Completely invincible all the way through. And that might be it. Oh, great block from Tyrant. Spinal's got enough skulls to bring this back. It's not oh, looking nice though. That was a little bit of a oh. that was a little bit of a desperation shadow counter. Paul B takes it. 3-0 too. Decisive victory. Yeah, and there was just there was just some things that were very were very saber season two saber wolfy that uh, that Paul was getting away with that you just I don't think Tyrant was familiar with. Tyrant, like we said, has had a break from the game uh, over the past few months, committing a lot of his time to Mortal Kombat. Originally another round player, but uh, essentially the best spinal in the business back in season one. And even in season though, one, absolutely. Yeah, and season two spinal has changed dramatically. Uh, he's a much better character in some ways, but he's also a much different character in other ways. So it's good to see it's good to see Tyrant playing again, making his way all the way to top eight. Coming at to the CEO. ring first. And unfortunately, he's out. He's gonna show us how it's done. It's Shin, the God Tristan. I expect Tristan to do a backflip. I I can only hope. Is he gonna take the long walk? Oh, it's the long drama walk. I got to figure out what we're listening to with Trin Tristan here walking out. I don't recognize it yet. Slightly, not going to lie, as we commentate this dude's walk. Slightly disappointed. Nobody used Saber Wolf's theme. Tristan wants your power. He's walking into a difficult matchup. Nobody used you've got. the Saber Wolf theme from the original KI. Dun 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 That was so good. So the, la the last guy we watched Thunder walk out with shades eight. indoors got bodied. It's very true. Might have might have impaired his eyesight. Tristan has identified there is a camera. The first of the players to do so. <laughs> I'm not confident he has but identified the camera as much as he would have posed either way. He's looking at the second camera now. Second camera has been identified. Walking towards the ring. Approaching it. The ring is plus five on block, though. He's nervous. Goes through. And he's breached the ring. He's ready to play. Shin Tristan also the first guy today to smartly lift the middle rope. Amazing and move. And his opponent, representing NS, it's Sleep. I think that took six minutes <laughs> for him to get over there. That was an Undertaker walk to the ring. Yep. Absolutely. So Sleep is coming up to the ring. Our, a, our resident killer instinct Conrad player. 
and uh, also crazy good at Glacius as well. I would love Sleep, to see another one of the greatest a little bit of the ice players on the planet. Let's hear it for Sleep. This should be honestly an extremely difficult matchup for Shin Tristan. Everyone, everyone that Sleep plays is a little bit advantageous with Thunder, I think. Yep. And Tristan pretty much plays Thunder. Thunder. Ken Lob Incarnate. Sleep is Three walking out, out to gentlemen. who let the dogs out. Mm -hmm. Did he really? I, you, I you didn't notice that though, right? We, we mostly just have bass reverb where we're sitting, so we, we can't we identify might, the songs. We might, 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 need to, might need to get a carrier pigeon to Alex Trebailey to like cue the music a little bit louder. Omega Mode Tournament is starting in the arcade room if you're interested. Ooh. I'm going to go lose it that too. Really? Just pick again. Hold the button. That's No, they, they patched it out. Did they? They actually they actually released an Omega Mode patch. I was shocked. They fixed that. And they patched other things, too. It's kind of crazy. It is uh, actually phenomenal news. You played a bit of Omega Mode when it came out? I have played just enough to discover I uh, am not any better in Omega Mode than I am in regular <laughs> mode. And I, I will forever miss the days of effective charge characters in Super. I, I really liked it. I really liked it. I, I, I loved it the first month it came out, and I really never played it again. So it was like last November I had the experience. It's fun, man. And you see a lot of that in Street Fighter V as well. Our players are setting up the match while we talk about other stuff. Well, both of these players are liked well enough that they have coaches. Uh, Shin Tristan has Rico Suave. Are liked the, well enough. <laughs> the other best Thunder in the business. I cannot see who is sitting next to sleep. I would guess it's Mello or one of the Midwest players. I'd actually, I completely take that back. It is the one and only. So you have the two best Conras that we have available. If not, I'm going to, yeah, I'll be you know what, in I'll, the I world. Was, I was going to say it. They're, uh, they're bandage buddies. <laughs> the bandage and if you buddies. replace the A with a zero or no, not a zero, no. and, oh, Stop it gets, it. It gets really it. weird. We're not going there. <laughs> it's a little weird. Family friendly entertainment. All right, here we go. Sleep Testing with his out the trademark early bucket on. hat. So what you guys are looking at is Season 2 complete. This is the uh, the end of Killer Instinct Season 2. And these are all the characters that are available right now, uh, including the bonus character, which is Omen. Uh, I think it, Season 2 originally was only going to be eight characters, and then Omen was their extra character that they wanted to do something with to kind of test out. And Shadow Jago, I think, is also technically a part of Season 2. It's just that they are working on him. It's going to take a little bit for that guy to come out. Yep. I think the earliest they say is like the general summary of dates is before the end of the year. Will Shadow Jago become real because of crowdfunding to support events like you're seeing right here? That same crowdfunding is actually applying the fifteen thousand dollar bonus to this tournament. Yep. This is this is I think the biggest payout of almost any game at CEO. It is the tide. It's tied. Largest. So payout. yeah, it is it is the biggest payout of uh, this and one other game at this tournament. Being a Killer Instinct player, I guess, does quote-unquote pay off. I'll shut up now. Being a Killer Instinct player absolutely pays off because, A, there is some money here to be competing for. Yes. It is a fantastic game to be playing. And if you are the kind of player afraid of gigantic brackets, KI is not quite going to have the yeah. bracket depth of a Mortal Kombat. Not at all. Or, or a Street Fighter. Then Tristan getting a big command grab, which is allowing him to set up his offense. Sleep was kind of going crazy at the start of this game. Oh. Good stomp. That actually crossed up. Breaks. Good I'm going to say that was medium linker. And as always, Shin Tristan is getting an incredible amount of damage from his absolutely unwavering ability to constantly do dragon punches. What he I find funny is that a lot of players are, uh, a lot of guys break medium, medium and light linkers and they say they can react to them. The only one you can actually kind of react to is a heavy. <laughs> And uh, at the same time, it's, it's, it's a good guess. I, that's what I feel, is that you need to make an educated guess because people don't like to heavy I mean, to, to cover the heavy linkers and the heavy doubles because they give more damage. They do. And they're just out there longer to break. Yoga Fever. It's interesting using that instinct to Ooh. set himself up that for was that a, throw. Uh, that was a Season 1 Rico reset. That is just a good Thunder reset. Yeah. It's looking really good right now for Shin Tristan. Actually, it looks like he missed his uh, his meaty cross-up. I can't believe that's been the perfect position three times now. Good backdash from Sleep. He has a chance here. Tristan kind of going in a little bit too much. Just like oh, a combo breaker last it. month. Shin Tristan makes that dragon punch look like the absolute best thing the in Best move game. in the game. Just so everyone can be aware, with the exception of empty jab dragon punch, like he just did right there, yes. canceling it back into dragon punch, 
He is not advantageous there, and especially against Conrad, who's looking himself open to a lot of damage. Oh, this is getting really close here. Sleep, does Sleep can pretty much get looked at wrong from Thunder, who does so much damage. Thankfully, Thunder can't do any of that damage way Sand over explosion. there. Sleep, Sleep loses life, but he has the potential, so he's still alive. Very close. Oh, the stop. Oh, oh, great response from Sleep. Uses the up grab, and that might do it. Yep. <laughs> So sadly, the greatest call ever from Sleep. <laughs> but at the same time, it gave Thunder his instinct to just be like, no. <laughs> and he could just cancel into his uh, his instinct, which allows him to teleport dash across the screen. Yep. And she interested him with the f presence of mind to actually dash backwards into that teleport. I very often see somebody cancel into that and just out of habit dash yeah. forward. Man, this game gets crazy. Oh, this game is fantastic. I think that's the thing is that I, I can understand why a lot of people were reluctant to try out KI. It, it's on it's on a system that didn't have a lot for fighting game players. You know, I, I get it, and I'm really really glad that finally people have the opportunity to even try this game. And it's one of the biggest be reasons I'd say to try it isn't even for like the combo system or the characters. It's for the net play. Like you you can't get upset at this game online because it it consistently runs really good. You have to try to have bad internet for KI to run poorly online. The yeah. uh, the guys at Iron Galaxy have done a really good job with netcode in almost all of their fighting games, starting with Third Strike, and uh, all the ones after that, Marvel vs. Capcom Origins. I don't know if you guys have played Darkstalkers Resurrection. It is incredible online. It is easily one of the best. But here we go. Conrad set up early, has gotten some good damage in on Tristan already, just swarming out in front of him, trying to keep Thunder away. Tristan. Oh, wow. Oh. Got him right. That, been, that must have really hurt if I was Thunder. It did have like a giant scarab run up and grab you right between the crotch. Oh. Good stomp. Here we go. Where's the setup going? Actually, you know what? It's, it seems like he's he's not timing his meaty, ambiguous setup against uh, against Shin Tristan very well. He's missed it quite a bit. I'm sorry, against uh, Sleep. I think that is... I'm not going to say obvious, but it definitely seems to be true. Sleep just keeping him out. The uppercut will nullify the bugs because it has an active hitbox in front of Thunder, which will poke the bugs out of the way. And just about everything else in the game. Yep. So I have no oh. idea what Conrad says when he does that. And that's a big uppercut from Shin Tristan, and he's doing very well right now against Sleep, who has probably the best Conrad is the in the business. I'm going to argue with you and go one and only might be a step ahead, but they are very much very what close. I would say the one and two. <laughs> Thunder's face. <laughs> there we go. He's got to make his way in. Tristan is playing this phenomenally so far. Just staying even on life against Conrad when you're playing Thunder is difficult, to say the least. Uppercut. Where's he going to go? Yep. Good uppercut. Identified that he was going to go into the sand, uh, <laughs> into the dive. That will not punish. I'm not too sure what Sleep was going for there. I don't either. Good. Wow. Called him on the counterbreaker. Conrad can't get a ton of damage after this because he doesn't have the meter to go into level four cash out. But this is going to be pretty good. Solid like 45 or so. 43. Oh, great call. He can capture him right here. Match. Whoa. He didn't get ultra. That must be a dropped input. That has to hurt. He missed one of the buttons. Shit, Tristan just going nuts. Coming back. This hurts my soul. Oh, Thunder can definitely come back on this. This is by no means free. Oh! Wow. And he still went for an auto double. He actually didn't go into ultra completely. Yep. Interesting. Might have been shook after dropping it a second ago. Yep. You will no longer need this. Connor trying stuff, to get Connor. all that blue goop. You got, you got personality, dude. Even though you're really ugly. <laughs> what? Do you find the one eyeball yeah, looks sexy? His missing eyeball. I didn't need that eye. Sleep in the corner. Oh, already. that's a huge lockout very early on. And he's oh. trapped in the corner right now. He's got no sand, no Man. way out. Overhead. Jesus. The timing on that was perfect. If anybody's oh. wondering right now, Thunder is easily top tier in this game. Just pick him up, guys. You'll do amazing with him. Wait a minute. No, you won't. He's actually very hard to use. I'm going to rephrase the statement and say just about everybody is top tier yeah. in this game. But nobody Except is all Omen. that easy. <laughs> Except Omen. I disagree with you entirely. Oh, you man. go go play a couple sets with Rico. Oh, I know, I know. And then, and then might eventually learn. There are characters in this game that take a little more work than others. I think that's that's a fair way to look at it. Tristan is being kept out wonderfully by Sleep right now. 
That'll be a ton of damage. Shadow Ender. Gonna cash out the damage a little bit more than it would. It puts one extra level on top of the cash out. Yep. So we're using that poking tool. I think it's down forward MP. Yes, it is. Oh! oh, he actually went for back heavy punch just as a solid, like, neutral poke. And he got woofed on for it. And we're even going into the final round. Tristan with two full bars to work his way through some stuff. Oh, he's going to fall into that. I like the I like the lot. A little bit too much ankle slicer going on. Thunders like to use that as just like an establishing poke. That cross-up. His ability to land Dragon Punch in to drop kick. Oh, he, he, he wow. knew Sleep was going to go for the medium break. And this is going to hurt so much. Look at his life right now. Look at it. Look. 72%. Welcome to the USA. Oh my gosh, and all of a sudden Sleep is bringing this back. Shin Tristan does have oh, this is not old, yet. old Faithful, which is Instinct. And uh, does, he doesn't even need it. This is Shin Tristan. Old he Faithful was, is not Instinct. He it was, is Dragon Punch. The thing is, what Thunder gets is that that Instinct cancel opportunity, so we can go nuts. That's the idea, is that you're waiting for them to block something so that you can eventually throw out your giant face into theirs and <laughs> cancel Somebody. it into Instinct. Man. Yeah, Thunder, Thunder's a character that relies heavily on, on hard reads. And if he hits those hard reads, he is rewarded heavily. Other than that, he kind of can get spacing and zoned, but as we're seeing, what Shin Tristan is doing right now is nullifying the spacing and zoning by throwing Thunder uppercuts through all of that stuff. And yep. it actually is getting rid of a lot of what Conrad does. Right back in, trading early hits. Once again, a depe. Uppercut for Thunder is uh, Samamish. Good stuff. More time. He has gotten a correct guess on those dropping boots more so than anyone much. I've ever seen this weekend. That's going to hurt so much. Not a level 5 cash out, but close to it. I think Sleep is just is his brain. We've lost him, guys. He's not punishing regular things anymore. Sleep needs a very good round here, I think, to get back in the game. Yeah, yeah. When, it, when I just saw him not punish that stomp, and he actually just jumped away, I don't know, man. I think he, we, might, we might have lost him. Oh, Shin Tristan made, uh, not trying to break the doubles, I'm sorry, the mediums. Another uppercut. Good stuff, catches him on the command grab, hits the bugs, but doesn't go into a double. Doesn't go into recaptures either. He's in a yeah, dash opposite Shepard side. Cut. There yep. we go. That is oh. the opener ender. That was definitely a, a error from Shin Tristan. He didn't want to do that. Oh, no. Sleep got a, this. This is looking very good for Shin Tristan right now. This Sleep's going to have to make a huge adjustment. Okay. <laughs> it's a starting point, but there is a long road There's to travel right road. now. That's a reset, actually. Good way to start. He's out of meter though, which is the toughest part. The other problem is that Shin Tristan is getting closer to oh. instinct, but it doesn't even matter. Conrad takes an axe to the face and literally wins one of the harder matchups in the game. Absolutely. That is, for anybody watching at home and does not understand KI, that match is incredibly difficult. Not easy. And Shin Tristan made it look very, very fair. Yeah. So that's us moving into. I think we're gonna go right after this to. Oh man, we're we should go be through probably more losers working matches. back into more losers matches. Yeah, we got losers coming up right after this. We're gonna see Bass or actually Paul B and Bass. And uh, yeah, this should be pretty good. If you guys are watching this right now live, we are from Orlando. This is CEO 2015, and we've been having three consecutive days of some of the biggest fighting game competition out there. Not only Killer Instinct, Guilty Gear. Other fighting games from Capcom, including Marvel vs. Capcom, Street Fighter 4, as well as the Super Smash Brothers series, which has been absolutely insane. I believe those matches are happening right now as well. They are.
So CEO this year is being brought to us by CyberPower, which produce a litany of battery backup and UPS systems, all of which are not only phenomenal, but they've gotten involved with a couple of tournaments this year and have made sure that there is not a shred of equipment in this entire venue that can go down because of a thunder strike, like what we had last year, where lightning hit this building and oh, we ran out of power. There was a little bit of that happening this year, too. Yep. They keep us up and running. They're fantastic to have, and we're incredibly appreciative. And then moving back into more peripherals, we've got Hori this year with Nuvulix, which is a gorgeous, gigantic, heavy-duty stick. I like if it. If you want something to play games on and make everyone else you know that plays fighting games incredible envious, you can check out Hori's new Vulix. Uh, I really want this stick, actually. Yep, that's at HoriUSA.com, and you can also check them out on Twitter at HoriUSA, Inc. So we're going back. It's going to be Jago Blake in losers versus Bobby. Oh, you're right. I looked the bracket wrong. So this is this is a legacy Killer Instinct match for <laughs> any of you guys that possibly were watching old coverage of KI. These were the first two characters that were introduced to the game and kind of the base for all of which KI was designed back in Season 1 and even moving into Season 2. You had a character that was kind of a uh, all-rounder, can kind of do everything, which is what Jago is. Master actually uh, does everything but is a master at none. And then Saber Wolf, who is extremely profound with Rushdown. And these characters have changed dramatically over the span of, uh, which has almost been like two years now. It's kind of it's kind of crazy. We, we, of course, saw them first at E3 back in 2013. And uh, at the end of this year, it's going to be the two-year anniversary of Killer Instinct's launch. And it's uh, still going strong, so here we go. Still growing. Tournament numbers this year are up by 40-50% from yeah. last year. So this might be a button check, not positive, but no. Paul B looks pretty serious. Yeah, he's going right in there. If you see several we'll start dashing around, that ain't no button check. There we go. So Paul B's just going to be looking to get up next to him, press every possible button he can. Paul B using that back heavy punch, it's called overpower. If you charge it, it actually puts Saber Wolf at a slight advantage for the fact that it has a very slow startup. Some stuff I remember about Saber Wolf from Season 1. I remember a couple of things. I'm extremely bad with them now. Jago Blake getting a huge lockout at the start of this game. Good block. And this is where Saber Wolf becomes a nightmare. Here we go. All these buttons, all these over-unders, all these cancels, and all of One, that two, damage. 1, 2, 3, 4. He can still cancel it. Good blocks from Jago Blake so far. I'm actually really impressed with what he's done. Finally gets tagged. Oh. And it, you know, pretty much, if, if you're a competent Saber Wolf player in Season 2, you're always going to get damage after your instincts. Yep. It's almost guaranteed. It's a very, very difficult situation to block. Good trip. Goes right under the fireball. Clutch break right now from Jago Blake. Would be getting damage back normally. Health back normally, actually, but having oh, to burn his instinct wow. at the start of the match. Paul committed to the hamstring, which avoids fireballs. That was an insane amount of damage. Insane how quickly he got to that. Here I'm we go. Still not sure where Yomi's life bar went. Yeah. I, it, I don't even feel like that combo was very long, and all of a sudden it was 60%. Double grab. This is tense right here. That's going to be it. Can't oh. shadow counter through. He tried. He definitely tried. I like that Jago Blake did not accept death. He's like, I will give this a shot. Needed to wait for the last hit is what he needed to do. I th yeah, he might have He might have survived through it. I'm not seeing, like, I'm not seeing Jago Blake responding with a lot of anti-air DPs. He's doing, he's doing quite a few of uh, Tiger Fury's on the ground, but uh, he's not punishing a lot of jump-ins. And jago has got the most damaging dragon punch in the entire game. Yes, he does. Good sweep. That has a hard knockdown for every character. You'll see a lot of pro players ending in the hard knockdown because they want the setup just like that. Good Ooh. neutral jump. Paul B's got a pop instinct. He doesn't. I am shocked. He needs to use it in the first round, and he didn't. Wow. So that much almost... That almost cements Paul B's ability to use instinct once throughout this match. Not entirely. I mean, Not if he entirely. uses it right away, yeah, he's going he to get twice okay this here. game now, which is going to be very dangerous. If Jago Blake's able to do a whole bunch of damage really fast, he's not going to be able to, but he doesn't. Unfortunate, but Jago Blake's going to have to pull this one back. He also didn't get to use his instinct in round one, which is a huge, huge deficit. Yep. As Jago, you definitely want to be using it in the first round just to get that life back so you can get your two and a half yes. health bars. 
Oh, Paul just bullying him in the corner right now. Yeah, Jago Blake's going to be lucky to get a normal out. Brings him towards the middle. Cash out on the level 2. Pearl turns it into a level 3, so it's about, yeah, almost 40%. Oh, no. He's getting hit by a lot of stuff right now. Pop Instinct. Uppercut. Into grab. This is get exactly what he needed. Back. Another one. He had to do the light one, and he whipped it. He didn't hit it. Jago Blake is taking a lot of damage right now. Chooses not to break any of it. Good grab. Jago Blake can win this right here. If Paul B gets locked out, he dropped his combo. Why did he drop his combo? Ah, whoa! Keats? No idea. I the honestly... crowd is yelling Keats. Everyone else wants to know what happened as well. Paul Keats B looking know. at his stick. Keats is going to be like, save that replay. I'll fix it. it either way. Didn't, Actually, he won't. They're not working on it anymore. <laughs> that, I think I think they might make adjustments to small stuff, but I seriously have no idea what happened. It was a. It almost looked like a combo breaker after the first hit. I'm really curious to see what exactly happened there. There was some just 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 as a weird quick tangent. There were some interesting things that happened in like season one where some characters were doing damage that they shouldn't do, and it was because when they were an instinct, like for example, Saber Wolf. But either way, very curious system to this game. Combo breaks it. That's a punish. Jago Blake going for those short combos. Uh, the, the thing I've noticed is that a lot of players are really reluctant to make their combo strings go beyond the first double. No, and in this tournament is particularly, I've seen a lot of short combos. Very yeah. few players are going out to anything resembling max damage unless they've got a hard lockout on early. They really just want that, uh, they want their 20%. Their Jago Blake got his uh, throw into fireball. It's exactly what he needed. Oh, and he got oh. some extra ones there. He's going to dash through it. Oh, opens them up again. Him. Wow, good break. Heavies. That's going to be... Oh, oh. I, you know what? Jacob Blake did have the right idea. It's just that Paul B's had more invincibility. Yep. Pretty much challenging Saber Wolf's uppercut is never Ooh. a winning situation. One, two, three, four, five. Goes for the wall splat. I like I like it. He just accepts the fact that he put him into the corner and Paul was just like, I'll just I'll like I'll take this positioning. Yep. Jacob Blake's burning a lot of meter yeah. on uppercut cancels. A little bit of desperation meter going on right now, just to just to end the pressure. That is going to be it. I'm gonna call it right now, he, unless he breaks some of these. Getting very close for Paul B here. Yep. And uh, Jago Blake. The only thing he can do to win this is if he lands a whole bunch of fireballs. Nope. And he's, he made the jump. Paul B takes it 3-0. to zero. So Jacob Blake's going home. Paul B is moving on. We should be seeing Shin Tristan and one and only now. Oh, so poor Tristan's got to go through Conra after Conra. Another Conra. And like we were saying, this match is not easy for Thunder. He, he made it look very very profound for Thunder's favor in, in the first game, but what we're going to see now is uh, a completely different style of Conra. And one and only plays a very different Conra than Sleep, like you just mentioned. So even though Shin Tristan was getting through Sleep pretty effectively and pretty easily, the yeah. very same things that were proving successful just 10 minutes ago might get him killed now.